Welcome to day eight of this 21 day event on Kusala Consulting page. We've been discussing change. What everyone wants, everyone I speak with and when I read social media and blogs and complaints and observations, everyone wants change. So let's talk about it. So I decided let's go, we're going to talk about it for 21 days. But what I'd like to bring into the mix is what exactly do we mean when we say we want to change? What exactly do we mean when we say we want change? And this is what I'd like to really emphasize and highlight every single day. What are we actually meaning? What are we actually meaning? What are we actually meaning when we just say it? I want change. And it comes down to the part is that I am tired of feeling the way I'm feeling about my experience. I am tired. I am done tolerating the way I'm feeling. I want a different experience. And we have this assumption, this core belief that if things changed outside, when I bump into it, I would look at it differently and I would feel differently and things would be so much better if I just walked outside and it would be a perfect world. Everyone would be just kind and loving to me and it would just be amazing. If just people would get their crap together, their shit together, their ducks all in a row and I would be fantastic. And, and that's what we're all assuming. That's how we were brought up. We were brought up to be polite, to, good, to, to be good people, to always do the right thing. So when we do the right thing, other people look back at us and say, hey, you've done the right thing. Good on you. Validation is now sent your way. Love and appreciation is sent your way. But little dude, we know that out there, there's a whole range of variety of duality and just things to pick on and that you can actually focus and prefer. It's like an amazing selection of items that you can just go in and then just select. And yesterday I just brushed slightly on the topic of what feelings are we familiar with. And if you notice now when you go out in the world, you sort of prone and pull towards scenarios and situations and circumstances and people that you have an innate knowing that you will get that feeling from choosing that, from socializing with these kind of people, going to certain places, being involved in certain events. You have a certain expectation that the feeling that you're looking for, the conversations that you're more prone to getting the feeling that you want, the approval that you need, the validation that you desire to maintain a familiar feeling going on within you. Hence, we keep doing and saying the same things and hanging out with more or less the same people to keep that familiarity happening, that vibrational frequency habitat at the same temperature, the same perfume. Okay, the same essence of that familiarity. So things just feel hmm, normal. All right, but always wanting to feel normal is the contrary to change. Change is uncertainty. Change feels very unfamiliar. Change implies that you're thinking and feeling about different things. And you say, well, what am I supposed to think about? Well, great. Let's diagnose your imagining skills. First, I want you to become aware of what imagination really is. Imagination is this ability that we all have that we use 99% of the time to envision something that we really don't want to experience. It sort of gives us the creeps and like, Oh my God, I just thought about that. You can literally make yourself go through a nightmare if you think about it. Okay. That whatever you're imagining, meaning that an image will come to you and you can actually see a picture in your mind 
and by feeding it details and specifics with little words and thoughts and beliefs, which those are the descriptive labeling tools that we have, we can sort of paint ourselves a picture. And then once the brain sees the picture, the mind has created, now the body is feeling that feeling. Now I really want you to see how these three th elements are all connected. When you define something, you see it. And when you see it, you've, um, you've created the feeling within the body. And now we've made a distinction that imagination is something that's not real and reality is something that actually has happened or you've experienced on some sort of level or someone you know has experienced it. Take a look at these definitions of what we call reality and imagination. The mind doesn't know, the brain doesn't know whether you've actually experienced it or you've just invented it off the top of your head. The body is feeling it. And if the body is feeling it, it's as if it's an actual experience. Ninety percent of the things that you're thinking about and feeling haven't even happened and probably will never happen. But you've experienced it. The body has gone through it. And most of them give you a feeling of sense of anxiety and fear. Your body's actually feeling it. And that's when we stop breathing correctly and naturally with our diaphragm. We start to hyperventilate and breathe with our chest. And that's when your sympathetic nervous system pumps in, the, the stress hormones, and you get all hyped up about something that hasn't even happened. Again, for those that don't uh, haven't seen the 21 day remembering how to breathe, it it's really beneficial to seeing the connection with this uh, series of 21 days, setting the stage for change, and the 21 days of remembering how to breathe. Certainly, paint the whole picture of what tools you actually need, which are free of charge in your ability to actually experience something different. So let's talk about imagination. When you're thinking about planning your day tomorrow, that's imagination. But you say, hang on, I've already done it yesterday, so it's not actually imagination. This is reality. This is reality. But hang on. What is reality then? Just because you've experienced it before, it's not imagination. Imagination is something um, made up. Imagination is not something made up. Imagination is when you are contemplating in your mind something and seeing it in your mind's eye and your body is actually feeling the effect of it. That is what imagination is. Take note, just become aware maybe three or four times during the day, you just, if you're at your desk or you're doing some house chores or you're out and about or you're sitting in your car waiting for the red light to change, just notice, what am I focusing on? What am I thinking about? And just notice that if you've seen an image or you've created an image and your body's feeling it, just notice that is imagination. I'm imagining something. Now, having that ability to imagine, wouldn't you want to be imagining something that would allow you to feel a brand new feeling? What would it feel like if? What would it feel like if I was in that scenario? What would it be feeling at? What is the contrary to the, the feelings that you've already listed in your book? And what are the feelings that you're desiring to feel? And give yourself a sample, a trailer, a, a sort of just a taste of what that would feel like to your body. Your body doesn't know whether you're actually having this reality experience right here, right now, or if you've imagined it. It doesn't see the distinction. You have labeled the meaning. You have distinctively categorize these two. Imagination is one thing. It hardly ever happens. I'm just imagining it. It's nothing serious, whatnot. And these are the reality of the things I've actually experienced. 
Whether you're imagining it or whether it's actually happening, your body is feeling it exactly the same. So give yourself some relief. Give yourself a new experience. And I think someone's um, coined the, the term creating tomorrow today. I think it was Joe Dispenza, maybe I heard it. And I really like it. Creating tomorrow today is a habit that he, he has at the end of his day. He either sits in his, his preferred chair, your spot, your favorite spot, um, or just before you doze off to bed and take a recollection of the day and the feelings that you felt and say with appreciation, I, I appreciate the experiences I've had today, meaning the feelings that my body and my mind experienced today. Wouldn't it be nice now to have that bouncing off place to know when you know what you don't want, you know more clearly what you do want, right? Because most people just say, I don't know what I want. But okay, if you haven't verbalized it yet and defined it, have a look at what you've already experienced and just notice the feelings, the familiarity of those feelings and just reach for what would you prefer. And just before you doze off, allow yourself to imagine with the intention that you want to create the feeling and feel it now. It's like having a taste just allowing the body to feel that chemical reaction to that feeling. Because at the end of the day, we want the feeling we believe the thing will give us, the event will give us, the circumstance will give us. We always want the feeling. And what the mind seems to betray us in a certain way it makes you believe that once you get the thing you'll be allowed to feel the feeling the two don't have anything to do with each other the circumstance the item the object the event whatever it is it is inaccurate information we are misinformed You don't really need the object in order to have a feeling, to feel the feeling, to experience the feeling. All you need is to focus and really desire to feel it. Your desire, your intent desire, your intention, your expectation to allow yourself to feel the feeling you have been wanting to feel for so long. Those people that have been in... Uh, in a single relationship and our desire to, re to really meet that one person. And they, they sit and they're like, oh, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. And the imagination of growing old all by themselves, that's imagination. That's imagination. Instead, what I did, I want, I just captured the essence and I allowed my mind to just go into this imagination. What would it feel like to be with someone that I could explore these emotions, respect and unconditional love, and being able to hold their hands while we're walking along the street and just, and I just cultivated this respect and the sincerity and this, and you know what I did? I did a video and just got as many images as I can to assist my imagination because I became a bit rusty. So I did a YouTube video. Um, I'm not sure if it's public. I might share it if someone wants to see, get some insp in, inspiration out of it. But images help to instigate a feeling. And your imagination is one of the most incredible, magnificent tools we already have at our disposal. No one needs to learn how to imagine. Look at children. You give them a broomstick and they're riding a horse. You give them an empty bottle of water and they can make all sorts of helmets and they're an astronaut. And they, fe they can feel it. I wrote a short um, 
book, ebook that you can find on my website um, called The Amazing Abilities You Have, and uh, the which talk about all the tools that we have at our disposal, our ability to focus, our ability to imagine, our, our ability to define and to describe all of these abilities that we have and we're using them to actually create what we don't want. Our ability to focus, focus, focus. Focus is number one tool and you have it. Imagination, great tool. You have the ability to imagine, to create you're consciously aware beings. You're much more than this body-mind connection. So sharpen your imagination skills. Uh, the other book I wrote is Imagining Yourself into Being. And when we think we're thinking, hypothesizing, discussing, talking, complaining, criticizing, judging, that is all imagination. So you can go to my website and uh, www.kusalaconsulting.com um, at the home page, all the way down at the bottom, just type in your email address and you can, you'll receive those two books if you want. Um, yeah, notice, notice what you're imagining during your day, three or four times a day, every day, make it a point to just notice what am I thinking about, what images am I creating, and just see the connection of this beautiful triangle. What am I thinking, what am I seeing, and how am I feeling? Connect the dots, and whether it's actually happening right here, right now, or whether it's an invention, an imagination, an intuition, just notice what comes to your mind. And notice if you imagine in 3D, um, if there's color, if there's any sort of brightness, notice the elements of your imagination. I noticed I only like see black and white, for example. Um, and the 3D, not a big forte. It's sort of like, I've noticed everyone imagines in different ways. So just describe and diagnose your way of imagining. What do you really see? Do you see specifics? If you focus in well, can you actually see like the small details or is it just like a general picture? Let me know, write in the comments. Focus and imagination, great tools to use if you're wanting to experience something new. Give us some feedback guys. Have a great day.